Hello, and welcome to The John Ark Show. This episode is called The Real Secrets to Eddie Van Halen's Success. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe, like, follow, and comment on the show. Also, I'd like to tell you about HollywoodIsCalling.com. It's a great service that allows you to purchase live phone calls from your favorite celebrities. There are more than 100 celebrities to choose from. You can purchase a 15-second call for $19.95 or a live 30-second call for $29.95. So give it a try. It's great if you want to talk to a celebrity or if you want to purchase a gift for somebody else. Hollywoodiscalling.com. Now, let's get started. On October 6th of 2020, musician and rock guitar legend Eddie Van Halen passed away. It was a loss to the musical world of tremendous proportions and one that many of his fans are still affected by. Most people know that Eddie was reportedly worth more than $100 million when he passed away and that the band Van Halen was one of the most successful groups to ever come out of California. What they may not know are the real reasons for Eddie's success. Today, we're going to discuss the band itself and tell you how Eddie was really able to ascend to such stratospheric uh, financial and cultural success. From the 80s onward, Eddie Van Halen and the band Van Halen were a tremendous musical and financial force blazing through the entertainment industry for decades. They would release hit album after hit album and go on one ultra successful tour after another. When MTV began putting their music videos into high rotation, then the band's success blasted to an even higher level. Despite all of their success, there were ongoing issues inside the band that caused them to change lead singers from time to time. What never really changed was the talent and tremendous work ethic of Eddie Van Halen. His endless love of music and the guitar would drive him to put in countless hours of practice, improvisation, rehearsing, exploring, and developing new guitar sounds, techniques, and arrangements. That was one of Eddie's secrets to success. It was his willingness to put in countless hours year after year, developing, improving, and innovating his guitar playing abilities. It yielded such incredible results that simply having Eddie uh, add a signature solo to a song of yours could make it a hit. Before Eddie Van Halen agreed to work with Michael Jackson, and add a guitar section to beat it, he had to be sure that the guy calling and asking him to meet with Michael was real, that he was legit. So he started yelling at the guy on the phone. Within a few minutes, Eddie quickly realized that it was Quincy Jones on the other side of the phone. Eddie spent less than an hour in the studio creating a legendary signature guitar solo that went on to make Beat It one of the greatest songs on the Thriller album in 1984. Eddie would later say that he was skeptical of contributing to to Jackson's album because he wasn't sure how much he and Michael had in common musically. When Eddie showed up at the studio, Quincy told him to just go ahead and improvise. So what did Eddie do? He created a guitar solo that some of the engineers at that recording session claimed actually caught studio speakers on fire. Now, I don't know if that's true or just great PR myth, But this story became an immediate legend throughout the music industry. When Michael Jackson heard it, Eddie said, I don't know how he would react to it. So I told him I changed the middle section of the song. After Jackson listened to it, he reportedly turned to Eddie and and said, thank you so much for having the passion to not just come in and blaze a solo, but to actually care about the song and make it better. After the record came out, Eddie was shopping one day in Tower Records in Los Angeles while Beat It suddenly came on um, the store's uh, sound system. His solo came on and he hears these kids in the store saying, listen to this guy trying to sound like Eddie Van Halen. Eddie said, I tapped him on the shoulder and said, that is me. Eddie loved telling that story. The willingness to bridge the gap between musical worlds like Michael Jackson and Eddie's hard rock allowed the music, allowed his music to be heard by many millions more people than it uh, ever would have been without that sort of uh, fearlessness. 
That's secret number two to Eddie's success, his endless willingness to explore new areas and to cross all sorts of musical boundaries. Secret number three to Eddie's success was his understanding of how important it is to preserve his legal ownership of his music and to preserve his ownership of the band he started. Eddie would never allow anyone to take those things from him. No matter how often the lead singer in the band changed the band, uh, itself would remain owned and controlled by Eddie. And that is one of the things that helped him build his vast financial fortune. When people start bands and they begin creating music and playing it on tour, the experience of doing so is, uh, is often so intense that they are easily misled and distracted by their music company and, and tricked into surrendering the rights to their music. Years later, when things slow down, the royalties from that music continue to generate a fortune uh, that most bands never see because they have signed away all the rights to those songs in the early days. You know, there are once famous musicians buried in unmarked graves all across this country because they never benefited from the enormous money their music generated. That money went into the pockets of the music labels they signed with. The world has changed a bit today as most new musicians and bands understand what it means to sign a record deal with a major level label. That's why so many of them will write, produce, and distribute their music over the internet. They will promote themselves with free social media, and they will sometimes sell their own music directly from their own websites since they realize that allowing many of the streaming services to play their music uh, often provides no financial benefit at all. Given how incredibly difficult it is for new artists to make any money at all with their music, many of them will start selling merchandise like t-shirts to generate money to survive on. That's also the reason so many musicians have day jobs or multiple day jobs just to keep putting food on the table. It's those day jobs that make the pursuit of their dreams at night possible. The question is whether or not new technology will soon make it easier for struggling musicians to make a better living. I believe it will. Our hope is that streaming services and social media companies will soon develop new business models that will allow new artists to generate a large revenue stream from their music. Making more money from their art will allow them to create more music and having more people enjoy music on social media is still one of the greatest drivers of audience growth. Doing this will benefit both the artists and the streaming services and we hope that everyone involved will realize this and implement these opportunities. So with that, I want to thank you for watching and we will see you soon.